Hello, this is Karis Alexander with Deep Truth Media. I wanted to do this sharing uh, with regards to um, the Mars and K2 conjunction. That's uh, well, really, it's more about Mars uh, being in um, the sign of Capricorn. And um, for the next six months, and usually um, Mars only stays in a sign one point one and a half months on average. It takes two years to generally go around um, the astrological wheel of the 12 signs. But for some reason, uh, and it's obviously a part of the evolutionary process that we're engaged in, that Mars is in Capricorn at this specific time. I think it's a, a very pivotal uh, time period in which um, Mars is our will and um, what we do with our will, that is our intention. And it being Capricorn, which Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, which really um, defines our, um, our structures, uh, institutional structures, um, our physical body structure. So uh, you will probably see a lot of um, a lot of people attempting to use their will or 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 their Martian or angry type energy, or um, that's how it transpires on the negative perspective in the physical dimension. They will use their will to attempt to get you to conform to their ideas or, or their philosophies or their ways of seeing the world. And you may be doing that to others. Um, you may be trying to impose your will uh, on others, but really this time is really about allowing to um, really do that reflective work. Because when we bring awareness to anything that's happening in our lives, when we bring that awareness, the energetic of, of that awareness, the capacity to be aware of who we are and how we interact with this physical dimension, the very act of awareness breaks the spell. It allows us to see things from the perspective of our true self and our relationship to uh, this concept of ego or personality and its interaction with the physical dimension. And um, yeah, and that, that, that allows us to dissolve some of the, the imprinting or the imposition of this physical material world on our essence, uh, allowing us to uh, expand outside of the confines of our perception, our perception of reality. And so this time is very, very, very powerful. Um, the energies are just exquisite. Um, and that's from my own experience, um, just feeling the tremendous amount of support and, and radiance uh, through the heart, um, the portal of the heart, and just really feeling a real deep, deep, deep connection and sense of joy and peace and well-being and confidence and love ultimately, really feeling a real sense of purity of love. And this purity of love that I'm expressing to you is available and accessible to everyone. There are those on our physical dimension who are in process of frequency sorting that is moving out of alignment, uh, out of the old negative patterns or frequencies that no longer serve us. So anything that is reflecting on the external reflective that you are not wanting or uh, that is a neg of a negative frequency, it is reflecting back to you that you need to do something that is to raise your frequency to a higher vibration so that you can transcend those negative frequency patterns that keep showing up in your life over and over again. Because as we move into the frequency of the heart, we are able to transcend our physical perception of reality, which has been a perception of reality that has been imposed on all physical beings in this physical dimension. Okay, so Aquarian age flood symbols in politics that I'm gonna speak about in this article, which is in the description, you can read at your leisure, is referencing the correspondence between astrological or universal principles uh, that is 
things that are going on in terms of the planets in our solar system and the correspondences of how that's translating in our physical dimension. So the power control force use uh, astrological symbology and the planetary alignments and the transits of planets in order to mimic what's going on in the universe, because what's going on in the universe is really what's going on within each and every one of us. It's an internal subconscious experience that we are experiencing that looks or perceive is a perception that is on the external reflective, but all of this is going on inside each and every one of us. And we are the projectors and of this world in which we see on the physical dimension. And so I'm just showing you some correspondences that keep showing up over and over again. It's not so that you feel victimized by the system, that you come to understand that it's just a mirroring of a, uh, an unfoldment of our universe, universe uh, in terms of the evolution of this whole concept of consciousness in this physical realm, and that the power control system use planetary alignments and transits in order to um, steer humanity in a specific direction, which is in, concord in accordance with what they are wanting. So we are building someone else's reality, but that is changing. We are moving out of the third dimensional perception of reality, moving into the construct of the heart, which raises our frequency, allowing us to construct worlds using our, our mind and our, our brain and our thought and a thought process uh, in order to create and manifest a world which is in alignment with the frequency of love. Okay? So this Aquarian Age flood symbols that I'm going to show here, um, Emmett Flood and Maxine Waters, these are all um, metaphors for um, this uh, metaphysical or uh, symbolic of the transformational waters that uh, we are all experiencing. And it's the, 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 the um, regeneration that happens through um, the dissolving of all consciousness or negative programs. And um, I'm also gonna talk about the, uh, the connection with the Pentagon Papers, Watergate, and how history is repeating itself through uh, these metaphors. Um, from the last time that Mars was conjunct K2 in 1971 and, um, and how it's showing up again in our physical uh, material world in terms of the media, uh, the same corresponding type of events, uh, very similar to what happened in the past. And I'm going to also make some connections to uh, this uh, time period in terms of the, the, the acceleration and this whole concept of being in the Aquarian age in which Pisces or Uranus is actually in Pisces, um, but and it's creating this electrical uh, synthesis in our, our minds because Pisces is about our capacity to create, our capacity to imagine what we want in physical realms, in this physical realm and with uh, Uranus actually being in the night sky in Pisces uh, is really working on our, our neurological and physiological uh, systems in our uh, body and um, causing us to think differently and respond differently to life as we progress, uh, whether we are digressing into a negative frequency or uh, a, our are moving up into a higher frequency, uh, which is more incongruent with our essence, our quintessence. So before I talk about uh, these uh, conjunctions uh, with Mars and, and K2, I want to just go over to my uh, Facebook page, page me there if you so choose to. Um, but I just posted this posting on Facebook uh, just to bring something to consider for everyone. Can you conceive that you are a mini universe, a microcosm of the macrocosm of the universe? Can you conceive that everything you perceive outside of you is a reflection of your internal universal state of being and that the, the frequency and the vibration that you're holding right now is a reflection of your emotional state and everything that is showing up 
for you in your objective, that is your external perception of the world around you, is that you are simply perceiving what is a reflection of how you're feeling inside. So if you are change your internal state to uh, with intention to feel that sense of peace and joy and love and gratitude, that it will actually propel you into a parallel potential or probability that exists right in the moment in which you feel anger, resentment, victimization, um, or a sense of powerlessness in your experience within this physical dimension. So that other reality exists parallel uh, to the one that you're already existing in. And so if we can just shift our frequency to a positive frequency, in that moment, we change the timeline in which we can create a world which may be potentially different. And if we look at our life from a perspective of frames, that once we we are in a frame right now, but in this moment, now we're in a new frame, and then we're in a new frame, just like a movie projector showing a movie. It's We, we know that the film sh is showing many frames, but it's all happening simultaneously, and that simply by shifting our energy to a higher frequency, we can actually shift um, what we manifest into our physical dimension. So I know this may be sounding a little bit out there, but this is what we're, we're coming into the gnosis, into the knowledge of, um, into the, as we move into a higher frequency, that this, this concept, these concepts or ideas, which are just simply um, uh, in our actual blueprint, actually materialize and we are able to experience life in a different way. So this is what is happening for many people on this planet. I'm not the only one going through this. For those of you that are listening, many of you are going through the changes and coming into this, this wiser and greater gnosis of how we can individually and collectively build worlds. That knowledge and information is coming into our energetic field, into our inner knowledge uh, and wisdom of how we have the capacity to create worlds through these biological vehicles and the personality that is you uh, using the ego as, um, as a tool, not as the, as the ruler or the runner uh, of, of your life, but as a tool in which you can maneuver uh, through this consciousness system. And so I basically finished off by saying that if we do this, if we feel the feelings of love and gratitude from the heart and hold that frequency, we can literally jump into another possible reality. And it's from the heart space that exists the next, that six exists next to the one that we're currently in, that we can transform our lives and move into a different reality of our own choosing and our own making. It's at a higher frequency that we do that. And when I talk about frequency, it's about moving your emotions to another emotion. So if you're in an emotion of anger, moving it to emotion of peace or joy or well-being, that is what we're calling about shifting frequencies or frequency sorting. So therefore, when you have a thought or a feeling you are literally giving a magnetic and gravitational field to the energy of your internal universe. And that is how you receive back your perspective reality. And so I said, now this is the deep truth. So when I share these perspective, it's not to, um, you know, presume that I'm sharing something that's way too abstract for anyone to conceive of. There are many people who are conceiving of what it is that I'm sharing and coming to the greater knowledge and awareness um, that through this information that I'm sharing and moving into our frequency, which resonates at the, the, the frequency of the heart, that we can uh, shift our perception of reality and understand and experience the language of the heart and move into a greater gnosis and awareness of how we can create our internal world, which will reflect our outer world perception. Okay, so I wanted to go to this um, article that I have.
and share with you. So again, if we go back to this whole idea of conceiving of our universe, what we will see is that Mars is in Capricorn. Mars is in the sign of Capricorn here. And I have on the 5th of July, I'm in Hanoi, Vietnam. So I'm doing it from the perspective of where I am. But you will know that it's the same place in the sky for you. That is Mars is in Capricorn. Again, it's conjunct K2. K2 is a, um, is a point, uh, a manifested point in the sky in reference to our, our moon. Okay, so if we look at this universe, we conceive, we can, 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 you, can, you, can you possibly conceive that this universe exists within you, that you are a microcosm of this universal concept? And it is all within you that all this, this evolution of human consciousness is happening within you and that you are the projector and that the external reality is a projection of this, this internal universe that you are perceiving with your innate, your eyes. And so the article states, in this article, I highlight some connections I've made to how the world events may be connected to the Mars conjunct K2 and Capricorn for the next six months, which started, or for six months, which started May 15th, 2018, and will continue until November 10th, 2018, when Mars will enter Aquarius at 11.11, 11, 2018. So when I was looking at the, um, when Mars enters Aquarius on 11.11, 11, 2018, I thought that was quite interesting. So if I go up here to 11, and then I go up, and I'm showing you here that Mars is in Capricorn. Um, and I go to the 11th month. You see Mars has been moving. But if I go to the 11th day, you'll see here that Mars is in Aquarius. But if I go back one day, Mars is in Capricorn. So just for that one day, I found that quite interesting that that was the marker in which represents Aquarius. So I'm thinking when they talk about this 1111 portal that many uh, people on the spiritual path or spirit, new age movement will talk about the 1111 portal. Maybe this is the 1111 portal which represents uh, the, the demarcation uh, in terms of the sign of Aquarius is what I'm getting here. So I found that that was quite interesting. Um, when I was going through the astrological chart or wheel. Okay. So during the, this celestial transit, the energies may propel or inspire each of us to look at our past patterns of thought and behaviors that have become crystallized into the expression of who we have become that no longer serve us and hopefully with the precision of Mars and our intention, we will be able to clearly uproot those past programs of thought that no longer serve us so that our essence may have the capacity to flower and flourish through each of us. Yes, so this is really a time of not holding on to our old belief systems or patterns or old traumas which keep us locked in a certain way in our biological vehicle uh, feeling victimized by the system of consciousness, paralyzed to even make any um, decisions in our lives that we can actually take the time during this period to actually surrender and bring awareness to those energetic patterns that are no longer serving us, allowing them to dissolve so that we can be freed up in order to experience more of our greatness more of our magnificence, because that truly is what is available to each and every one of us. And so the energies of this celestial conjunction between Mars and Ketu may prompt us to dredge up our past patterns of thoughts and memories that need to be cleared in order to allow for the integration of the higher frequencies of light and sound, attempting to take up residence in our physical form. That being said, not everyone will take this path as there will be so many in the collective body of humanity who will stay focused on their third dimension 
of perception of reality as the age of higher frequencies like the fifth dimensional perception of reality and other frequencies become accessible to those who have the blueprint, which is designed to carry the higher frequency of the heart at this time. It is important to remember that most of humanity is not designed to take the next step on this evolutionary step. But if it is your path, then you will move into the higher frequencies and everything that you're experiencing right now is, which may be negative, is so that you can take that next step into the frequencies and come to know the higher order of what is available to you in the terms of being able to create your manifested destiny. Now, it is important to note that Capricorn rules politics, government, and Mars rules our will, our will to take action. So let's see how this is playing out on the physical world stage in relation to our universe sky gods, that is the planetary bodies, traversing through the asterisms of the star systems. It was Donald Trump who hired Emmett Flood back in May of 2000, May of 2018, an attorney who helped President Bill Clinton manage his impeachment defense to join Donald Trump's legal team as part of a more aggressive shift in tone in his presidential legal strategy as a special counsel for Robert Mueller's probe. I don't know anything about Robert Mueller's probe, but just want to show you here that Emmett Flood, which is the symbol of the symbolic, symbolical flood of the water bearer, that is uh, the um, symbol of uh, Aquarius and in relation to a physical representation of an individual who has flood in his name and um, how he is being used in order to um, perpetuate uh, a narrative that is transpiring on the physical world stage. If you read about that, uh, I post the article of when he was uh, um, brought on to Pre President Clinton's legal team um, back in May. Now, if we look at the name meaning of for Emmett, it is of the old Ger German origin and the meaning of Emmett is entire universal, okay? So what it's representing is your reflection, a physical reflection of this universal flood of new energies that are transmuting the consciousness of humanity. So June 25th, 2018, when Mars conjuncts K2 and Capricorn from a sidereal standpoint, that is where actually um, Mars is in the sky at this time, we have the second time in recent months where there was a reference to flooding with now waters, which I believe is a reference to consciousness first with the appointment of Emmett Flood and now Representative Maxine Waters, again, Flood and Waters, her name is Maxine Waters, another physical representative, calls for her harassing admin officials in public. And, Trump, and, and, and in this instance, Trump calls her low IQ a, as a reference um, I'm making a reference that he states that her low IQ um, um, in a tweet, he states that Congresswoman Maxine Waters, an extraordinary low IQ person, has become, together with Nancy Pelosi, the face of the Democratic Party. She has just called for the harm for supporters, of which there are many of the Make America Great Again movement. Be careful what you wish for, Maxine. So this Maxine Waters is calling for uh, the administration uh, of Donald Trump's administration for harassing um, admin officials in public. And um, Trump's reference to her IQ, again, is a, and her reference in her name to Waters, again, is this reference to consciousness. Because as we evolve in our present state, in our low frequency, moving into and transitioning into the higher frequencies, your IQ will become greater. You will become or access the genius within you. And so these references to IQ and genius are um, simply MEMS, 
that are proliferating through the media, through individuals like Donald Trump and the media questioning his 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 um, IQ as well, is just a reference to um, to attempt to keep humanity in a lower frequency, um, in a lower state of consciousness, uh, unable to um, move out of that frequency in order to experience their greatness, their genius. So I think these are cute, very interesting metaphors that you can tap into to, to see the correspondences of, because this universal mind that we are immersed in is a mind. It is a genius. It's a living genius. It is a living mind. And when humanity, the body of humanity is kept in a lower frequency, it is kept from its genius, its greatness. I just want to emphasize that. So I found it interesting that Trump references Maxine Waters' low IQ as it was only back in January 7th, 2018, that Trump's IQ was also in question. Trump says he's a genius. And then there was a study that was showing the presidents, other presidents actually who were geniuses. And I figured this is quite interesting to bring to your attention because just on that day when this article came out, which was January 7th, 2018, I wanna show you something in the universal sky that was happening. So if we go back to January, we go back to January 1st, on our chart here, um, and the 7th, the 7th. And we will see that um, Jupiter, okay, I'm gonna go to um, Jupiter I'm going to show it's for Jupiter. Surf so sure Jupiter in the sky and look where Jupiter is. So Jupiter, and I'm going to also show you, uh, let me show you here where Mars is. Mars. So Jupiter and Mars, Mars are aligned in the sign of Libra, okay? And I also wanna show you where, where is the moon? Where is the moon? The moon is in Virgo, okay? So you're seeing that, okay? The moon is in Virgo, okay? So the interesting thing that I wanted to show you uh, in the article that I found to make another connection was on the 7th when Donald Trump's IQ was in question. Um, there was a um, alignment with um, when this alignment occurred, when the moon that in this um, song the lyrics from the age of Aquarius. Remember that song when it came out in the 1960s, uh, that we are in the age of Aquarius. The first two lines of the lyrics says, when the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars. Well, I just showed you um, that that was the alignment. And on the 7th of January, 2018, I showed you the alignment, and here's a in the article. I found it very interesting. Very few references of the event occurring in the solar system. However, on January 7th, the event did occur, but in different signs. Jupiter and was aligned in the in the seventh house Libra and the moon in Virgo. With the questioning of Trump's IQ on the same day as this celestial event leads me to believe that there is a prophetic message here. That, that not only his IQ is in question, but rather whether the body of humanity has the capacity to take the evolutionary step in their conscious evolution. The last time the moon was in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with Mars was January 20th, 1998. The next time Jupiter and Mars will align the sky is March 21st, 2020, and the moon will be in Capricorn. 
The last time Mars was conjunct K2, which represents the past, was June 18, 1971, during the Pentagon Papers. But before I go into that, so I just wanted to make sure I covered all my pieces here um, with regards to, um, so that's just another reference uh, in terms of the, the marking or demarcation of the age of Aquarius that I thought was interesting referencing uh, da, Donald Trump's IQ. But I want to go back to this whole concept of K2, K2 because I believe that the constant reference to the mental health and IQ by those in power is also a result of the planetary node K2, which represents our physical body. So there is, much, there is a much deeper side to K2, and it has been called the most spiritual of all planets, but it's not a planet, it's actually a node. K2 has been considered the planet of enlightenment and liberation because K2 represents our physical body, which represents uh, the universal principle that's working through us. As the one who has lost his head, which is really what represents K2, if you look at this picture, that's a representation of K2, is uh, a body with, without a head but having a tail. And... Um, I found it interesting that often K2 is understood as Uranus during, during Sanskrit to English translation. However, Uranus isn't visible to the naked eye, and its discovery is attributed to the use of high-resolution telescopes in modern astronomy, astronomy. Therefore, it could be possible that the lunar node of the moon is really a reference, which is K2, is really a reference to a point where the moon is aligned with Uranus but may be obscured from our perception at this time in human history. It has always perplexed me as to why these nodes had such significance in, in astrology. And many astrologers will say K2 is like Uranus on steroids. And it is only tied to two points in the celestial sky relating to the moon. I believe when, when planets conjunct K2, they are in fact a conjunction to Uranus, as the Sanskrit texts indicate or the absorbing of the energies from the Uranus um, moon um, aspect, which would actually in turn uh, bring up, the moon reflects our mind. And so this would be the, the recalibration or the rewiring of our mind through the electrical forces uh, which uh, Uranus provides energetically for each and every one of us as we are traversing this inner inner, internal uh, experience or subjective experience. So our Earth, our Earth is moving into a higher frequency, allowing all of our species on the planet to either de digress or progress. That is, people will either hold on to their belief systems, hold on to the negative frequencies, and uh, manifest a, an external reality based on that frequency. And then there will be others who will be able to uh, eradicate and dissolve all negative frequencies, all ne negative programs, all negative traumas would keep, keep them paralyzed and, and feeling victimized within their, 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 their ex objective uh, perception of reality, freeing them to move into higher frequencies, allowing them to experience a, a greater depth and dimension of what is possible, and that is creating a perspective reality, which is more in alignment with the truth of who you are and who you are becoming. But it is important to note that these energies can be very destabilizing for many, and you may be experiencing that. So astronomically, Rahu and Ketu denote the points of intersection of the paths of the sun and moon as they move on the celestial sphere. Therefore, Rahu and Ketu, Rahu is our future and Ketu is our past. So Rahu represents the, the head and Ketu represents the physical body, are respectively called the north and south lunar nodes. The fact that eclipses occur when the sun and moon are at one of these points gives rise to the depth of understanding of the swallowing of the sun and the moon by this concept of a snake. So I want to provide um, 
I hope that I provided a greater context in terms of what's going on in this uh, physical dimension. But I just want to add a few other things that were reflective of this conjunction with Mars and K2, which happened back in um, uh, 1971, just to make a few other connections for you here. So the last time Mars was conjunct K2, which represents the past, was June 18, 1971, during the Pentagon Papers. And the Pentagon Papers, officially titled Report of the Office of the Secretary of Defense, Vietnam Task Force, it is a United States Department of Defense history of the United States political and military involvement in Vietnam from 1945 to 1967. I think that maybe because I'm in Vietnam, um, I was able to tune in to the energetic from the energies now in the past and able to bring this forward into um, uh, our perception of what we're perceiving in this reality. Because what's happening with um, Maxine Flood and, um, and uh, the, the um, Emmett Floods may be uh, scenarios which are building or playing on uh, the Pentagon Papers. Uh, and not only that, but the Pentagon Papers, more specifically, the papers revealed that the U.S. had secretly enlarged the scope of its actions in the Vietnam War with the bombings of nearby Cambodia and Laos, coastal raids on northern Vietnam, and, uh, and that the Marine Corps attacks none of which were reported in the mainstream media. So I think that we're gonna have some similar type events that where the media is gonna be involved. And also even uh, just last year, we had a resurgence of the Pentagon Papers in the movie, The Post. And more recently, the repackaging of this story above in the, in the movie, um, The Post, which starred um, uh, Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep last year. Um, the power control force, they don't reinvent anything. They just build upon um, past events. And you can see why they would have to do that because they don't want to create something new because uh, they need to build on what they already know in order to keep the foundation of what they have manufactured in this physical dimension. So I said, it would seem a repeat on the same thing from the Pentagon Papers to again remind us of the past in 1966, Vietnam State Department military analyst Daniel Ellsberg accompanied U.S. troops in combat, documenting the progress of U.S. military activities in the region for the Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara. Keep in mind the following year, we had the Watergate scandal, another reference to water and flood, like men's. June 17th, 1972, both these events happened when Sun was conjunct Orion's hammer, interesting enough. I found that very interesting. Although history does repeat itself in the third dimension of the physical world as we learn to tune into the higher frequencies, we actually become free from the confines of what is playing out on the physical world stage. I share with these these connections that I make in order for you to bring awareness to how the power control force are simply through the media um, uh, manufacturing events on the physical world states that are mirroring the, uh, uh, the planetary bodies and, and um, as they traverse through the celestial waters of our solar system. So, Again, just making some connections and let's see what transpires on the physical world stage during the next six months. Long, six month long transit of Mars conjunct K2 from May 15th to the November 10th, 2018. And any other kind of watery related events that may unfold. So I hope that, uh, but really the watery events that, that may unfold really that you should be focusing on are the, the watery events that happen within you in terms of the transmutation. And I have got so much water flowing on top of me right now as 
I am in Hanoi, Vietnam, and it is so hot here. So just, I am just dripping in water. So that is interesting. So the purification by fire, that is what we all are to embody and allow the third dimensional reality to just float away and ripple away so that we can experience more of our greatness, more of our magnificence. So I hope you enjoy the sharing and gratitude and enjoy in my capacity to share in this way as we connect the dots out of the realm of the physical dimension through the universal realm in the remembrance of who we are and who we are becoming, that is essence personified in physical form. If there's any way that I can support you with an astrology reading, please feel free to reach out to me. I have my astrology reading pages here. I'll have the link in the description. And uh, if you'd like to donate uh, in terms of supporting me uh, as I continue to share in this capacity with you, I welcome your donations. It truly is a glorious time. I thank you so much for tuning in. And like and subscribe and share this video with your friends and family and leave a comment if you like. It truly is a glorious time. I thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.